Hello, everyone. Welcome to another product school webinar about the topic of uh, Diana in uh, product management. I would like to spend the next 20 25 minutes about how we can incorporate diversity, equity, and uh, inclusion principles into building uh, digital products. So today, first, I do a quick uh, self-intro about myself, and then I talk about why at all as product managers we should think about uh, DNI in our work and what are some of the key root causes of the issues that we are seeing today in digital products and uh, spend some time to talk about some tactics that how we can address uh, some of those uh, issues. A little about uh, me, my mission, my life and career is to build products that solve uh, that solve the challenges for next generations. I have 10 years of experience in product management in energy, fintech, food, and HR. I have co-founded two startups, and one of them is uh, Keshmo, which was a social enterprise to connect farmers and consumers to cut the middleman in between. As I was, I was working in Keshmo, I realized that farmers like this uh, lady uh, really are excluded from the supply chain, food supply chain. They don't have equitable access to uh, the market. And as a result of that, their uh, power is completely influenced by middlemen to gain uh, the right price for their uh, product and their <coughs> financially, their, their life having impacted as well. And started to do some research to uh, learn more about uh, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion has been recently over the past year that has, has been my recent passion that how actually we can build inclusive products that create more equitable lives. But why, why, why it matters, aside from my personal passion overall for product managers, in my opinion is that it is, it is really the right thing to do. As, as much as we can talk about, hey, the what is the business case for uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, I think the most important thing is that it is the right thing to do. And why, why I, get, I share one example, I was working with, um, <clears throat> financial institution, we work on alternative credit products to understand how we can really disrupt the traditional way of uh, credit scoring. And one of the ideas was really to use the, uh, the customer's neighborhood data to uh, score them. Although it was a really uh, kind of effective way of scoring uh, customers, but because it was based on neighborhood data, it was excluding a large population of people who were living in distressed uh, neighborhoods. And inherently because they were living there without being them, uh, being a kind of a person with a good or bad uh, credit because they were living in those uh, neighborhoods, they were punished by, by that kind of model. And I strongly disagree with that idea. And eventually we didn't go uh, with that. Uh, we didn't pursue that. that idea at all. But my point here is that that uh, idea could have been a very profitable opportunity for the business, but it was not the right thing to do. And that's that's my point, uh, saying that the most important thing about DNA is that it is the right thing to do. We can <clears throat> sometimes uh, think about business cases, but sometimes at those, it is also against the financial button, the, uh, the bottom line of the company. So specifically, um, one of the main reasons uh, DNA is important is, is because of a reputational risk. More and more, we are seeing that public opinions and medias are putting uh, the companies on fire when it comes to them having uh, racially insensitive uh, products. And one of the main reasons uh, for that uh, rising attention is that digital products have the potential to scale uh, systematic bias because they are really scalable. They can address millions and billions of people around the world um, that, that's, that, that while the opportunity is really big, also the risk of uh, scaling systematic bias is high as well. And the other side, the product teams may also miss a big group of uh, their users. And the good example for that is that the, um, a few years ago, uh, Domino's Pizza uh, had a very inaccessible website and it, was, uh, it, it got sued over of that simply because it was excluding a group of people who were not able to order uh, pizza through their website. And think of that any e-commerce company in the world follow the same uh, practice. 
and how he can exclude a large population of people from accessing to uh, online shopping or online ordering uh, in their day-to-day -day, uh, life. And when you're thinking about these kind of um, uh, big issues and trends, um, I, I, one of the kind of the reasons behind it is that over the past couple of decades, the product management community has not been as diverse as it should be. And usually the same people get hired into those product managers. Most of us know that getting into product manager career is not a really easy one. And usually we hire people who have an experience in product management. So we need more and more diversity of thought to really break this cycle of building the same type of products for the same group of uh, people. And these are some of the headlines that uh, when it comes to discrimination, bias in digital products, and you see that they're all over different sectors from transportation, ride sharing to travel, entertainment, and social media. But, but the good news is that the industry has evolved, like many other things that the industry has, has learned over time, the tech industry has started to respond by different initiatives. I have just two uh, examples of them over the past few years. One was uh, by SAP about their initiative around business uh, beyond bias uh, to fight uh, workplace discrimination by their HR products from recruitment to employee lifecycle management and performance management. And the other interesting one is uh, Airbnb uh, over the last couple of years uh, that when they initiated their, res their uh, major research project to totally understand how Airbnb could discriminate certain demographics from their product. There was actually research by Harvard published that on average, a person with a black ethnicity uh, could have a 16% lower chance to have their requests uh, accepted in through the Airbnb platform. But the, the platform, the, the Airbnb platform has started to think through uh, the experience end to end and to identify those opportunities. And there's a dedicated product team uh, to address these issues. So you see that as product managers, we have a really major role to address uh, some of the issues that uh, we are uh, seeing. So that, when we think about the root causes, um, I would say that there, there are many root causes that we can talk about, but I would say that these two, in my opinion, are the, uh, the top ones. The first one is that no matter who we are, no matter what, it, what is our um, job title, and no matter what is our background, we all have uh, unconscious bias. So when we are seeing some of these uh, bias uh, challenges in tech product, it doesn't mean that the product managers or the product teams were intentional to create those biases. It's basically that all of us have unconscious bias. And because of our limited worldviews and lived experiences, we are not aware of those unconscious biases. And as a result of that, it's really easy to embed those unconscious biases into our products. In the case of Airbnb, um, when Airbnb responded to uh, media, they said that, hey, it, it was not, uh, the, the co-founders didn't acknowledge it based on their lived experiences that is possible. Uh, to discriminate a person based on their uh, photo and name. And it was news to them because it was, again, in their unconscious bias and they learned and now they are uh, tackling it. And that's why it is really important to be aware of that, hey, we all have unconscious bias. The first thing that we should do is that to acknowledge it, not to ignore it, but also in the meantime, not to fight it, but to critically think about our biases. So how, how, how should we do that? But before we get into what to do, I'd like to spend some uh, time on clarifying that when we talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, diversity, sometimes people mistake diversity with equity and inclusion. As an example, we say that, hey, we need to be more inclusive. We need to have more uh, equitable um, processes. And people say that, and we need to address bias. And people say, okay, let's add, uh, more people uh, with more uh, diverse background to the team. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily solve the problem. And uh, I love this analogy about DNI uh, that if you think of a party, diversity means that 
uh, we invite everyone to the party. Everyone is invited, no one is excluded. But inclusion means that when they're invited to the party, they all can dance. So not only you're invited, but once you're in the party, you all can take action. So think of it as a kind of a product team. If you just, if you are a male dominated uh, group, if you are a white dominated group and hire uh, female, females or higher, uh, people of color, but don't empower those uh, people in minorities to speak up, to voice their opinion, to share their different perspectives. That doesn't work. Diversity it will fail here. And equity means that not only people, everyone is invited, not only everyone can dance, but actually everyone has an uh, has access to come to the party and has access and the uh, uh, kind of the opportunity to to uh, everything they need to be able to uh, to dance. So uh, I've seen many of the uh, end of year corporate uh, parties that they uh, they organize it outside town, one or two hours away from the town, and said, "Hey, everyone is invited," but they assume that everyone can uh, drive there, and automatically with those kind of parties, you exclude many people. So again, when you're thinking about diversity, equity and inclusion, it is not just about diversity of people or hiring more diverse uh, workforce. It is also about being more inclusive and being more equitable. And uh, once you start to think about it, I really encourage you to think about, to focus on two things. The first one, how we can decrease bias. And the second one, how we can include, uh, enhance inclusion, workforce, work culture, and work product. And when uh, sometimes I have these conversations with product managers, they, they usually say that, hey, see, like we are not a leader, we are not a VP of product or director of product. We don't have that much of an influence and power to change things. But I really like uh, this diagram from Asia, who is a, one of the thought leaders in this space that uh, she really encourages uh, us to think about, hey, how we can start with ourselves, how we can influence the team, and then eventually the product that we are working on. So if, even if we only focus on ourselves, and then let's start to advocate what we are doing for ourselves with the team and the broader product teams, we can still have some influence to, to change the status quo. Let's uh, take a look in, into some of those specific tactics. The, the, the first one, which is a really interesting exercise, I, I did it a while ago and it was really eye-opening for me, is a uh, circle of uh, trust exercise. So pick a sheet, uh, list the most trusted people in your ship care, five or six people, and uh, next to their names, start to write, hey, what is their ethnicity? What is their gender? What is their um, language? Uh, if, they are, uh, if they are people with uh, disabilities or no. And uh, it might be very eye-opening for you that usually, I don't say that it is necessary for you as what is for me, it was really eye-opening that I'm mostly in the circle of people that's very, very similar to me and there's not that much of diversity. And as a result of that, uh, when we are uh, dealing uh, with people who are like us, with the same background, the same uh, uh, way of thinking and worldviews, it really uh, causes a bias, a really common bias in product management and other um, uh, jobs, which is called affinity bias. That means that we are we always think about uh, the same other other people uh, think the same as we are because we uh, mostly deal with and hang out with people who are like us so this exercise can help us to identify uh, that opportunity and then the next step is that hey okay how, how i can make it diverse then we can start to uh, go to networking events to hang out with people who are not in our close circles, who are, we are not usually um, the kind of hanging out with them. And as an example, uh, I started intentionally to reach out to people who are not in certain areas that I even like, let alone uh, I'm comfortable with dealing with. And that, that helps you to start to 
reduce the gap that we have in our lived experiences because most of the bias that we form uh, over our lifetime is because of the real experiences that we have in our life. And if there are other people who have different lived experiences, they can help us to uh, gain different experiences. As an example, when, when I got married a few years ago, I started to understand that, oh, how uh, female life could be different, how, how they, they make uh, decisions differently. And that alone can help me to address the gap uh, uh, as, as a male in my lived experience about understanding uh, female people. The other tactic that you can uh, think of, and it is not only for yourself, but also about the team, is that how you can intentionally interrupt your um, bias and the team bias. There are a few ways that you can do it, but the most important one is that most of us are really familiar with the product development processes and different gates that we have from ideation to discovery, design, launch, and post-launch to do it with different checklists that, hey, uh, to make a go-no-go -no -go decision, to understand if we are on the right path to achieve the goal that we have for our products, so why not adding some bias check-ins to our uh, product development process? And there's some questions here to give you some ideas what those kind of check-ins uh, are. As an example, one of them is that in any stage of product development, ideation, discovery and design, are we excluding certain groups? Uh, if you have come up with certain solutions, uh, ask ourselves if that solution may have unintended consequence on, on certain segments. As an example, uh, we were building a digital uh, platform for um, banking and we wanted to make our experience more efficient, uh, but we, and we wanted to uh, kind of shut down all the legacy telephone, telephone banking that we had in the past. And while it was applicable for 95% of our customer base, we, we realized that, oh, there's kind of a small group of people who work, in, uh, who work and live in uh, rural areas who don't have access to network at all. And if we shut down that, uh, the, the, the uh, telephone banking, they, they actually don't have access to banking in any, uh, through any mechanism at all. So we are, we are intentionally excluding uh, those people who, although they were 5% of our, co our customer base, but we were talking about thousands of people, which was a still a significant population. So we started to think differently and to partner with uh, the telecom companies and other um, uh, network providers to see how we can address that, uh, that, that issue. But if we hadn't asked those questions, if we hadn't thought about them, uh, there was an op, uh, kind of a risk that our digital banking initiative could have impacted those people significantly in their day-to-day -day life. The other um, thing that you can do specifically in ideation discovery design process with the engineering and design team is uh, that ask uh, clarifying questions. When, when you uh, identify opportunities for bias, uh, it is really easy that we ask the questions uh, and that make people def defensive. Um, I give you one example. I was working with uh, the team on a global uh, product, a global feature uh, that initially it was only addressed to, uh, initially it was only targeting English speaking people. And so in my mind was that, hey, it is a global feature, not everyone necessarily speak English and then my thought process said, hey, maybe we are discrimin discriminating non-English speaking people. And then uh, I could have asked that, hey, this is exactly the same, that, hey, aren't we discriminating non-English speaking people? And instead of that, I asked that, hey, do you think we need to build this feature for non-English speaking pe people as well? Do you think there's an opportunity to think um, broader this uh, population? And we had uh, more and more discussion about it. Eventually, because of different reasons, we decided not to, but it's really helped a very uh, productive and open conversation to understand why, and uh, rather than the team being defensive, uh, try to have a very objective discussion about the decision we wanted to, to make. The, the other part is that um, throughout the product development process, 
as uh, PMs, we have been thought that to be more and more data driven, to use data in ideation, discovery, <laughs> design, and measuring the success of the product, but the data itself is not necessarily objective, it could be biased. So whenever we are using data, make sure you ask the same questions and challenge the data to ensure it is uh, not biased to a certain uh, kind of outcome that it is uh, talking about. And the last one, uh, the common thing in product management, uh, we need to have KPIs and metrics. If we don't measure the result and how we are moving and toward reducing bias, uh, we are not going to be uh, successful. And it is not really easy. Uh, I'm still learning how, what, is the, what are the best ways in different type of product, how to measure that, but the attempt and effort to uh, define the right KPIs and to measure it, open up a lot of opportunities for discussion that, hey, are we on the right path or no? And last thing is that if Diana is just become a, a nice thing to do, and some people want to do it, some people don't want to do it, and hey, we, we invest in resources uh, for those kind of check-ins that I was talking about or gathering data or measuring the result, it is not going to be a successful initiative. It's not going to address the first thing I shared in the presentation that, that hey, Diana is important and matters because it is the right thing to do. It becomes something on the sideline that is not going to be a priority for the team at all. As a result of that, we need to embed Diana into uh, the product strategy, or if you are a product manager for a feature portfolio, to the feature portfolio strategy. And that means that but the first thing is that ensure individual needs of the user in minority groups are thoughtfully considered. What I do is that I always try to think and challenge myself and the team to say that, hey, are there groups that we are not thinking about at this time of the product development process? Are we excluding anyone? Who are those? Try to reach out to them. Usually PMs think that, hey, it, it shouldn't be a risk because through research we listen to uh, our users and customers, but back to that uh, definition of equitable, the party that I was talking about, that you invite people to the party, they can dance, but they don't have access. I don't have a car to drive to, to, to the party. It's the same for our uh, users in the minority group. Usually we actively listen to the customers and users who are reaching us to us who we have access to connect to them. But for those users that either they can't or we don't have, uh, they can't connect to, uh, contact us or we don't have any means to access to them, it is really easy to exclude them and it is really easy to ignore their needs when we are building the product. And that's why we should be very intentional about them. That's why we should embed DNA into our product uh, strategy. On the other side, uh, shared about hey how important it is that to address the, our um, the gaps in our lived experiences through having a diverse uh, group of people in our team from different backgrounds. Um, but if those people don't have an environment to easily speak up, and they don't have the psychological safety to challenge the assumptions, the potential opportunities for bias or exclusion. Um, that doesn't help us to uh, remove those gaps. So it is really important that our product strategy create that psychological safety for everyone to skip, speak up and say that, hey, because our strategy is so, and because it is so important for us, I see that opportunity uh, for kind of bias in the product. As I shared in the example of uh, launching that uh, global feature for uh, English or versus non-English speaking uh, people, consideration doesn't mean that you eventually take action, but uh, when we actively consider those opportunities, uh, we truly understand we are going to be intentional with our decisions versus uh, making those decisions based on our unconscious bias. And we easily think that, hey, it is the right thing to do and everyone in the world is going to think like us. And the last one, as I mentioned, is that hiring is as important as uh, all the other aspects. It is the, I think the most obvious one. I didn't focus that much, but definitely build diverse and inclusive teams through equitable hiring process. It might be, if you're not a people leader, you may have less influence on it, but where you find an opportunity, definitely contribute to it. The last uh, 
uh, a slide that I have to talk about in my in my presentation is about this quote uh, from Amina, who, who is the co-founder of Different and the first head of product at Uber. And really, he, she's another thought leader in this space. I really love her work that uh, she, she, she emphasizes on that, hey, the more identities, background experiences represented by founders or product managers, the more problem we can identify to solve the more user uh, perspectives you can understand. If we don't have that diversity of identities and backgrounds in our team, or we are not surrounded by those people in our startup or advisory board, uh, the, the, the less it is possible for us to identify those broader opportunities that are really hidden uh, to us. So the, the key uh, word here that I want to make sure that we think about is really identity. Sometimes. We have a very narrow focus of uh, diversity. It is really beyond gender diversity. It is really beyond the people of color. It is really about different identities that we need to think about to add to our teams and empower the, the people from those uh, diverse identities to speak up, voice their opinion. I was really happy to have this chance to uh, talk to you about some of the learnings that I have had recently about how to incorporate DNI into product uh, um, management. I continue to grow uh, in this uh, journey. We'd love to read your comments uh, uh, later about, hey, wh what other tips you could share uh, about uh, Diana in product management? Thank you.